something I think that's a particular challenge about talking to you about your work because when I think of your work, I think that there's something about it that maybe goes beyond or tries to stay one step away from being named and wants to somehow skirt around language in a way. And so somehow to be here talking about it seems uh, you know, a particular challenge. I'm wondering if you have any thoughts about that, about talking about your work, um, trying to name it. Mm. Well, let's see. It makes, it makes sense, not because I'm trying to avoid naming, but I guess um, early on there was a struggle between certain let's call them artistic boxes that it seemed like I could plug into and simplify and clarify and um, identify, etc. right? But then right on the heels of that, I realized that that would necessitate repression of certain things that I'm interested in, either in terms of the forms or in terms of how to make it. So when you say boxes, do you mean like genre, like different yeah. types of abstract painting? Or different ways of right. things. Yeah, I mean, big ones could be words like conceptual artist versus painter, um, modernist, you know, postmodernist. Any of the things that, in certain ways, for me, seem a little unclear to begin with. We assume clarity, take on, take that position on as who we are, and then work in accordance with that. To me, um, so maybe that lack of clarity. In some ways, it would be productive for you because you could sort of it gives you a little more room to move. And I guess I, I think of your work um, in terms of a kind of activity-driven practice. That, that there's something about the, the activity of making things, uh, either making dots or marks, or putting things on or taking them away. And that there's a certain meaning or logic or sense of it that comes out of that, that activity of yours. Yeah, I'd say that's true. But <laughs> and you know, um, yeah, it, in the in the wrong years that could sound awfully. Um, don't think, don't don't um, just romantic. That can sound quite romantic. So yeah, I don't mean um, it that way at all. Yeah, I think that there's, okay. that's extremely complicated. Yeah. that that way of working. And yeah. of course, at some point you probably stand back and look at it, and then there's a kind of alternating current. I've operated out of the feeling that if I am alive today, and I ha think I have some sense of current issues that I don't need to pay that much attention to them. That's function for me. Do you know, so that you mean if issues might be uh, a kind of habitat, and you are kind of a, like a fam somehow familiar with it, or you move through it in a way that doesn't require... Yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's I'm breathing the air. It's in the air. It, it either is perfume or, or um, might be foul, you know, but I'm breathing the air. It's running through me. My response to it and degree of interest in it is, I guess, somewhat natural. And so in a way, I mean, I think a lot of artists maybe, the, the configuration of preferences and aversions or attractions really ends up making a kind of sense uh, on lots of different levels. But I guess in terms of this idea of naming, uh, because I think that, that, that a lot of your, your work over the years is really very object-like. I mean, you make these things that are objects, but at the same time, you also make pictures of objects. So there's something very thingy about them. Mm -hmm. and, and yet, they can't quite figure out what it is. And, and so they seem to be like uh, invitations to people to you know, try to name them or play with them or you know, kind of right. thing. Yeah, I guess at a certain point, I've consciously, I've been aware that um, they are not nameable, that they keep pulling you back into the visual realm. To remain in the visual realm for me is very important. Um, so if I were to use things more literal or more intelligible through the art language, let's say, either way, you know, it could close down um, or experience. So, or maybe derail it, like, like somehow send the experience of the work away from the work into something maybe more issues driven or right yeah um, yeah no because in some ways your things are targets they they or they're like little hypnotic um, lures right. to attention they 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 kind of um, 
I want to sustain like, fascination or something. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it seems that it's changing now as we speak, or has changed. But it seemed like for years, our generation, um, there was a certain kind of hierarchy of, of importance in the art world, you know, in terms of issues and what one should be concerned with. And to reside in entirely or fundamentally in the visual end of things was sort of um, viewed upon as being somewhat reactionary or, oh, come on, you know, painting, sculpture, please, you know, what are they about, you know? But um, for me, it's consistently been about that, you know, and um, I guess there's, there's without thinking that that is some kind of conservative um, interest, you know. I think it's very complicated. I mean, I guess there was this idea that maybe vision was somehow monolithic, aggressive, and maybe in some ways odious ideologically, maybe even associated with um, patriarchy or acquisitiveness and these kind of negative uh, values. But in some ways, I think you have, that your work works from a, a sense that vision is much more complicated than that. that um, For me, that's been a key. Getting back to the first question is, is that I think work, by definition, is a lot more interesting if, if we don't involve ourselves with repression in order to make a point. You know, it doesn't seem like it should go together. You know that we need to shut down something to, in some way, manipulate clarity or apparent clarity of yeah. thought or make it. You know, I got the feeling. I think I read an interview with you once a while ago that relates to that, and. You were kind of, I think you were talking about honesty and um, certain, uh, finding a way of working that had a certain moral character, that, um, that clarity, honesty, and, and, and sort of morality were associated. And I, I found it very interesting, and would be curious to see what you might say about that now. I think that was an interview, you know. Clarity, honesty, and morality. Yeah. yeah. As, as kind of associated uh, virtues, um, or the, that honesty and clarity were associated, and that that constituted something uh, of a moral, um, sh a moral shape to art making. Wow. No. Did that, does that seem does that ring uh, familiar? Well, two out of three of those words, it's like stop twitching a little bit. Yeah. Clarity. Yeah, I'm with you there. Honesty and morality. I guess I think I'm honestly... Already, I'm feeling complicated. See, already. I'm jumping off from... I mean, clarity, I understand. Uh, even though I'd be interested to hear how you might you know, define that or how you would recognize it right. in your own work. And somehow, I, I thought I remember that you know, you, you, you um, also kind of wanting to say that there's something very honest, you know, that, that these works mm -hmm. were an attempt to sort of strip away um, yeah, yeah, I don't think kind of anyone honest than anyone else's. Yeah, um, no, yeah. Inter interaction with their own self and their own work, you know. So it's not as if I have a hierarchy of honesty. I think we're all doing the best we can, you know. Um, morality. See, it's funny because I'm always saying and thinking that there is no morality. It's all self-imposed morality. I mean, I don't know if this relates to the question, but I. There's yeah, a lot of pressures on us in terms of um, what is agreed upon as to what an artist is, what is agreed upon as to what a contemporary artist is, um, you know, et cetera, et cetera, which a fair amount of that is not applicable, I guess, um, to me. So yeah. I don't know if that's a response to your question, but, but the honesty is in there. Right. It's in trying to weed through, well, um, why do I go to this place and have this experience? And why are most of the people either saying or, or think they are having an entirely diff different experience? Do I have the strength to pay attention to that? You know, classic things like um, how much of our behavior is oriented, how much of it is self driven, you know, things that directly get involved in work, growing, try, attempting to try to grow up, to, you know. Uh, Philosophy, which, which um, you know, re registering when what we're saying, what we're doing, feels as if it's true for us. You know, th that's the area that I'm, that I would think about in terms of honesty and morality. But, but very clear to say that um, I don't feel like I'm a more honest person <laughs> yeah. than anyone else. No, I, I didn't gather that from from the quote. It just it just 
was a very sort of um, I think we have, you know, a sense of a, a sense of a, like how you would establish a criteria. You know, when you make a picture, how do you know what is acceptable within a work and what is unacceptable? And if, I'm I'm always um, troubled by that question, both looking at students and my own work, and and, right. uh, and was kind of interested in hearing you talk about it. With, you know, um, and I guess because also in the last uh, five years or so, somehow the, this the, emerged this idea that somehow the artwork uh, could help make the world a better place. Um, mm -hmm. The artist could somehow do good deeds, uh, which I find somewhat troubling and maybe has made a lot of work very flat. And I think you're not somebody who labors under that. Uh, you mean that I have a, um, like a, sort of a moral burden? Right. No, I don't, I don't labor under that. You know, I, I'm clearly, Skeptical about the the. If I look at the audience of art in terms of the art that I'm making or you're making or most of us are making, where the art goes, um, in, you know, for the most part, galleries, um, some colleges, some museums, you know, most of us don't involve ourselves with any kind of real public or alternative situations. So, the degree that I can either um, implement social change, raise political consciousness, or um, make the world a better place, for me, seems subjectively problematic. So, yeah, I don't, I don't work under the illusion for myself that um, that, is a, that is one of the vehicles for that to happen. Yeah. And it's a very small um, group of people that have this interest and, and either in making it or looking at it. You know, it's, it's a language. It, the visual language is a language. Many of the, of the people um, using it or viewing it <laughs> seemingly mumbling and, and quite confused about. You know, it's complicated. Yeah. I, I, I relate it to Latin, you know, like making art somehow. We can't even decipher it ourselves at the time, you know, and, and certain kinds of education that I know you and I came under, I'll call it form oriented education. Some of that has been um, that, that relegated, you know, in the time that I was talking about in terms of uh, some demand as the work has to be about important issues and to make a shape or to make a um, scenario was no longer that. So educationally, we have found ourselves in, um, in a certain way with a lot of artists who don't know their ABCs. And I want to be clear to not sound as academic when I say that, I mean that in the highest level of um, visual experience, visual making. So. Yeah, it was strange. I mean, because that those those days you're talking about, um, in which you know the, the will to form or the obligation to, to sort of produce form uh, also had some kind of strange ethical character to the people who were saying. Right. It. I think it was a measure of their um, belief in it. It just it, it, they, had, they needed to sit. In order to say that they felt strongly about it, they needed to say that this was somehow universal. Right. And uh, it was really a measure of their own kind of passion or their own uh, desire to be passionate about it or something. Well, their own fear. Yeah, their own fear. <laughs> That's it. Exactly. Right. There's something about the institution of the art work, the art world, the museums that, uh, that, that have a kind of rhetorical character. Um, they want to argue that the artist is someone who um, is deep, special, and intelligent. Um, right. You know that the, just the fact that it's on a gallery wall or on a museum wall um, for a lot of people means that these things are kind of insignia of the sort of depth of the artist. And uh, I gather that you know that, that, that in some ways that's very troubling. It's not very helpful in making art. Um, and I think that in a way your work tries to sort of get around it in different ways. Um, somehow by making them play things, making them childlike. Uh, is that something that, that rings true or that, or that makes sense to you? That you yeah. Uh, um, yes. Um, not yeah, yes. Uh, <laughs> I'd say that you asked a question and I interpret it in a certain way, right? My interpretation, or well, my response to that is that the art world for me is often a synthetic 
environment. And I do agree that the implications are that um, people have been singled out because they are, it's, you know, the, the um, leaders in the field, you know, right? so objectively one would think that, that the best artists, whatever that is, are the ones that end up succeeding, you know, one could argue that it's entirely true, but one could probably say, well, as in any other profession, let's call it, right? The, you know, there is some kind of, some Reward. kind of appropriate rewards, rewards for, yeah, gifts, intellect, um, ambition. Profundity. Profundity, every now and then, yeah. <laughs> like it's in the here and there. Yes. So it's a battle for me to, in a largely, but not entirely synthetic venue, okay? Um, to try to um, infuse that realm with something that breaks down the, the, the distancing, okay? So that I, I look at it this way, that when I'm, when I'm going to have an, op an exhibition, and I'm given the opportunity to have an exhibition, that in a very basic way, I am allowed to put energy, put things to look at, put place things in a room that will um, clearly govern a certain kind of energy that happens in that room. You know, so, so we go to a church or, or a um, temple with, and that's filled with a certain ambiance because the stage is set for that. Similarly, art galleries are filled, for me, um, generally with a certain kind of detachment so that we go in and we look at work and we look at it at a distance, even if it's you know, an inch in front of our face. I'm trying to take that down and say, it's, come on in, you know, I'm, I'm using paint, I'm putting paint on a piece of cloth or paint on a board, and that exact act, if that has some vitality, that has some energy, that has some sensitivity, some sophistication, all those things, come on and take a look. You know, I don't want to um, distance you even further and, and play the role that um, I've got the power, I've got the secret. So, so, so ideally, and I, I've said this before, I do think that um, it would be great if my work could appeal to people who are extremely sophisticated, maybe who might, might think that they're painted pretty well or well, right down to someone who could say, I really like the feeling in the room, or I like the colors, you know? So that I shouldn't feel uncomfortable if my mother or my aunt or my cousin um, comes out with something seemingly very simplistic, because art is supposed to be such a, um, you know, distant, um, particular, you need that particular equipment to appreciate art, you know, high art, you know, et cetera, et cetera. I don't think one has to misplace the other. Well, in some ways, I think maybe the small scale of them and the fact that the mark is is kind of blunt, somewhat truncated, that it doesn't make a big sort of, um, you know, point of its own uh, accomplishment. That in some ways, there's a, the people can look at your painting somewhat vicariously. It's like a, it, there's a certain repetitive, you know, touch that accumulates little bits into kind of larger, you know, um, larger ideas that accumulate into even bigger ones and that, that maybe you can look at it somewhat vicariously. Right. You know, that, that in, on that level, is not, there's no mystery, and yet the thing somehow obtains some like, radiance. How would you, how would you describe um, your criteria for when you've accomplished something in your work? I mean, like, it could be simple as how do you know when it's done, or what's the, what's the, what's the kind of aspiration Mm -hmm. You know, because it is a series of little things that are accumulating, um, and you don't have necessarily a kind of a roadmap telling you where they go. There's a kind of an intuitive building. How, right. how do you know when it's sort of there? I mean, how would you define that there? Oh, boy. It's a tough question to answer with words. Um, The only answers I have wouldn't really be the ones that I would think were right. You know, 
like, okay, let's try this. This might have something to do. When, when it seems as if, um, when I've painted something that seems like a clear situation, that, that might be the best way to answer it, okay? Um, so that it seems to me that nothing needs to change, but it's also not um, about closure, you know? So you say that maybe, in some sense, that it, you've almost painted yourself out of it, that it has a kind of, um, that it's detached itself from you in a way that, that you were... To a point. Um, but don't you ever have a false end? You, know, you think it's done, you come back. Oh yeah, several. Yeah, often I want to believe that something's finished, but it might be, appear to be finished, and it's, and it's a little stiffer you know, than I want it to be, or, or a little looser than I want, you know, all those kinds of things. Like how something feels is important to me. How do, how do I feel when I look at something? Well, it's, it's kind of relates a little bit to my first question about, um, about the inability to name what it is, about trying to elude the ability to name what it is, and also that that relates somehow to this kind of behavior driven right. practice that you respond to something, um, something that you're correcting or that you're adjusting, and that somehow the accumulation of those um, becomes, you know, begins to sort of have a life or have a pulse. So. That, that idea about not wanting to name it, right? It seems, for me, it seems perfectly natural that I couldn't have it any other way, uh -huh. right? Because if we look at ourselves and think about how many things we are, right? And, and how many, and that we could be called any one of those things, right? Depending upon how someone comes to you or how they view you. Or what situation you're in. Right, but they're all true for each of us, right? I am all of those things, you are all of those things. So, so again, getting back to that same thing, to, to paint with, with some kind of need to edit several of those things for clarity doesn't seem to be worth the trade-off to me. Yeah. Never did, you know? Um, so that then I am intelligible, but, but life is so um, absolutely complex, you know, and um, so I don't want to um, feign clarity if it doesn't feel that way to me. So, so underneath my matrix of thinking and my body and how I touch things and like to build things, etc., is an experimental point of view, which has to do with um, like similarly like wanting to go to Greece if I've never been to Greece. Well, I've been able to paint in different ways with delight because it's new, it's fresh, um, it's interesting to me, you know, um, to render something, you know, if I haven't rendered it before, or to get very, very complex like I am now, or to get very, very um, simplistic and float a very clear form on field. All those things for me seem, seem um, to make sense, but, but the objective world in a certain way is asking us to be somewhat repetitive and somewhat consistently clear I mean the world when life isn't like that. The world yeah, of so commerce. Awesome. You're talking about the world of commerce and... Uh... Not even just commerce, but the world of, of artists. You know, I mean, uh, artists have either defined themselves that way or accepted someone else's definition of ourselves, do you know? Right, people, whatever, go yeah. through things in life, get divorced, have children, have relationships, have new relationships, and the work, the issues, quote, and the work remain consistently the same. For me, that's an odd, an yeah. odd thing. I don't believe that that renders anyone insincere, you know, and it can, it can it's be. not a moral thing that I'm talking about, but it, but it does seem odd that that would be a place of consistency, you know, in a life that's so inconsistent. I, I had this thought about your work and, um, that really related to um, some of your the images in your work that, that had some relationship that, in fact, uh, you pointed out once um, to like sports paraphernalia, like, like jerseys and, um, and hats and the designs that go with it. But I think there's something related to sports in your work that's maybe a little bit deeper than that. Um, and I guess immediately I think of, uh, for instance, in basketball, that, um, the sort of fluid character of an individual player's role as they respond to kind of um, quickly changing circumstances 
and, uh, and the sort of hovering set of constraints, which are the rules uh, in which they um, uh, operate. And that, in, and that, in a sense, there's something in your work on, on both those levels that relates to sports. And, and, um, and I'm wondering if that's a fruitful thing, or maybe it's a banal. Sports? Yeah, yeah, they, uh, yeah that, as an analogy, as, a, as a, um, some kind of, as having some connection to your method. Well, I'll say one thing first. I, I get um, very emotional at Olympic awards ceremonies and sort of um, get very close to crying. So, so um, but I'll get into sports a little more. But um, to think that someone trains, let's say, for four or eight years for a 10 second race, for me, that's very, very um, motivating, you know. Um, Sports have a refreshing clarity, you know, I mean, the, if, again, getting back to the ambiguity of, of the language of visual art, sports are so beautiful because um, you can't talk um, yourself through anything if you've struck out or if you, or if you don't you can't get argue the basket. You can't um, argue that there's a really profound kind of critical reflection on basketball. Yeah, <laughs> you know, uh, so um, it's, the clarity of it is, is nice, but... Um, and also things like those people on a team who hustle, who try hard, and those people who just sort of um, accept their talent and act out of that. You know, there are certain analogies that I find interesting. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Good. 13, 25, I like these numbers flying around here. <laughs> Are you sure? I'm sure. You're great, Glenn. You're really good. You just like speak in paragraphs and you know, <laughs> keep the thing. Can we pause for just one second? And we uh, just take a breath. That's pretty good. I mean, we kind of, we kind of rolled on that. Let's see here, just for a second. What do you think, Glenn? Is there any questions that, you, that uh, you'd like to that, that you'd like me to ask? I can just as easily kind of uh, something you, you kind of. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Technical issues. Uh -huh. mm. uh, I, I well, said, that would be a good question to ask me. No content is content. Is that what you said? Uh, is that what you just said? No. That's no. what you said. No content is content. Nobody will believe that. Huh? <laughs> Nobody will believe that? Thank God. What about this idea that, like, um, that somehow there's something. Yeah, there's, I'm thinking I was asking. I'm like, I won't even tell you what it is. Okay. Because it's a. It's another little quote from you. 